How can you tell when someone is lying? Well, for police, getting to the truth is very important. As you know, they've used lie detector tests for years, but now there is some new technology. CBS 46's Renee Starzik gives us an exclusive look at equipment that reveals your inner voice. I was with John Bennett when she died. I did not ever expect uh, that I would be convicted because I know that I'm innocent. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Truth or lies, fact or fiction, your eyes may not give you away, but with new technology, your voice could do you in. I had nothing to do with Lacey's disappearance, and we need to start looking for again because people aren't doing right, right now. There was more false statements in that transmission than I've ever seen in any other interview I've ever done. Private investigator T.J. Ward. He and his team of detectives are among the few now using layered voice analysis, or LVA. Speak into a microphone and it separates your voice into seven layers, reading emotions in your subconscious by subtle changes in how you speak. It's scary to know that you can get into somebody's mind and, and what's going on with just by having a conversation with them. LVA differs from the old-fashioned lie detector test. The subject is not hooked up to monitoring machines, and the interviewer can ask open-ended questions, not just ones requiring yes or no answers. And don't try to disguise your voice. We can tell if you're on drugs when we test you. We can tell if you're trying to manipulate the system, or you're trying to change your voice, you're trying to, if, you're, if you're crying and it's not really it's a fake. Investigator Ward analyzed last week's CBS 46 exclusive interview with John Mark Carr, the man who confessed and was then cleared of killing six-year-old John Benet Ramsey. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, an experience that was uh, very uh, intense. Look at the screen. It flags Carr's statement as inaccurate, indicating he's not convinced about what he's saying. I was with Jean Benet when she died. Her death was, was an accident. When he started directly talking about places he was and he wasn't, it came off false statement or inaccuracies, which tells me that he was not part or not there with John Bonet when she died. This is so horrible. You don't understand how horrible this is. This guy's got some deep, deep emotional issues. His overall stress, he's, he's just totally off the map. It had to be the right guy. An analysis of an interview with John Ramsey, John Bonet's father. He did feel bad for John Mark Carr. He was so abused and vilified and, and convicted. Uh, in the media that I started to feel sorry for the guy. Former Mayor Bill Campbell, who was convicted of tax evasion. I have never asked for or received a single dime from any city contractor at any point. But this is what bothers me right here. He's really having to think about what he wants to say and how he's going to say it. This is deception over here of what's going on in his mind, what's not coming out of his mouth. Some 60 law enforcement agencies all across the country now use layered voice analysis. One of them is the Forsyth County Sheriff's Department. Sergeant Bill Franco knows, like lie detector tests, LVA results are not admissible in court. But he has used the technology in dozens of cases. He nabbed a child molester using LVA. So you called him on it? Mm -hmm called him on it and uh, explained to him what the, what the machine was the results were indicating and he explained to me that he had done it and he was lying to me. His Those thinking who use level, layered voice analysis he's, agree he's thinking what he's saying, not replace but I can, good old-fashioned police work or a cop's instinct. This is not a truth or consequence um, instrument. This is an area to just show you to get you in the right direction and talk to him about the right things to be able to get you to the bottom of the investigation. I never told anybody to lie. Not a single time. Never. Investigators say sometimes the truth hurts, or it just may set you free. Renee Starzik, CBS 46 News. Layered voice analysis is about 85% accurate, a lie detector, correct about half the time. If you'd like to know more about this technology, feel free to log on to our website, cbs46.com. Governor Sonny Perdue. More than a year after a Forsyth County businessman disappeared, family members still are searching for answers surrounding his death. Fabian Casas last was seen at his Forsyth County auto shop last November. His body was found weeks later in some woods in Bartow County. The family has put up a $10,000 reward and they've hired a private investigator to help figure out how Casas died and who might have killed him. Despite the passage of time, the investigators say there still are clues. 
there leads there's information that somebody knows something and it, it'll be important with us with the GBI and our office to be able to try to establish this information to bring closure for this family. Fabian Casas left behind a wife and two young boys. Crystal Casas says the holidays are tough, especially for her three-year-old. He still remembers his dad. One person has been questioned following a deadly shooting overnight in Tucker. The victim was shot and killed at the World Cup Billiards and Pool Club on... The Hi-Fi Buys Amphitheater and these buildings, which up until earlier this year, were home to the Lakewood Antique Fair. I look forward to seeing development in our community. The fairgrounds are owned by the city of Atlanta. And today, City Council Member Joyce Shepard invited community members to come out and share their ideas on how to use the space. It's nearly the size of Atlantic Station. So we have an Atlantic Station. For Alan Castro, Lakewood is home. He started selling antiques there at age 14. Well, it was the beginning of an entrepreneurial career, trading and buying and selling in that environment over there. They did films down there. We were extras in the film. Been part of South Atlanta since 1977. He'd like to see a plan that reflects the site's rich history. Some others suggested a place for kids. Is it a great thing to have a zoo here? Shopping convenience and economic opportunity are also priorities. To really bring in jobs to this part of the city and really have people recognize that, hey, there is a south side to Atlanta, but and it's great. With lists full of ideas, the city will soon begin looking for a developer to bring this together into a space residents can be proud of. I would like to see this community develop into something fantastic because they always forget about the south side. Sine Simpson reporting for us tonight. Another mild evening. Mm -hmm. I hated to see the sunshine leave us, but at least it's still kind of warm outside. Yeah, and it really is unusually warm, Stephanie. I want to start by talking about that. You may be wondering, well, really, how warm are we talking about? Well, the normal high this time of year is 60 degrees, but Monday, yesterday, we hit a high of 69. Today, 66. Tomorrow, we're expecting to get to 68. Now, you know this isn't going to last. I mean, we're about to start the month of December, for crying out loud, and it looks like it will be cool when we do that because as we head toward Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, temperatures go back down below 60 degrees as cooler weather starts to move in, and we will get back to reality. Right now, it's pretty nice, as Stephanie was saying. Fairly pleasant. There are a few clouds out there, uh, but it's pretty mild. 60 degrees at night at the end of November. That's not too bad. A light east wind kind of gives a little bit of a dry feel to the air, but the humidity is still high at 78%. And across North Georgia, temperatures are around the same mark because of the clouds that are in place. Now, there is a little bit of light rain starting to creep its way up I-75 here in the parts of Butts County, but I don't think it's going to make it into Henry County or anywhere close to Metro Atlanta. What we are seeing, of course, are all the clouds which are clearly visible on the satellite picture. And as we pull back on this picture, we can see that they extend all the way back here into portions of Arkansas and Louisiana. Now, there is a cold front out to our west that's going to tap into moisture coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. And with the cold air behind it, showers and thunderstorms will start to develop tomorrow and Thursday. I don't think we'll see too much in the way of thunderstorm activity, but we will probably see the rain move in here. Uh, starting tomorrow evening on into Thursday and then quitting on Friday as the cold front moves through and that cold front will usher in the cooler temperatures I showed you earlier. Storm Tracker 46 weather in your neighborhood shows you tomorrow's skyline, which starts cloudy and fairly mild. 58 degrees in the morning, a jacket probably will get you by okay. By noon, we're up to 65, but then in the afternoon, we could start to see just a few sprinkles and not everyone's going to get wet. We'll see a little bit of light rain start to move in as well by tomorrow night. And our Storm Tracker uh, cloud rainfall model shows how these light rain showers will move in here. Western neighborhoods around 7 o'clock and try to make it across North Georgia. The clouds are still in place. And then Thursday, uh, during the day, we'll see more of these showers start to move through. And then the last bit of rain will move through on Friday. So it won't be raining all day, but a light rain in spots as we head toward the end of the week. On the Storm Tracker 46 seven day forecast, you see the mild weather for tomorrow, for Thursday, 
And then the cool weather moves in after the showers quit on Friday. Look for temperatures over the weekend to stay below 60 degrees, and then more rain could move in late Sunday and Monday. Well, I want to know if your house is all decked out with holiday lights, because if it is, you could be one of my holiday houses and win a resort mountain vacation in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Just go to our website, cbs46.com, for the details and email me a picture. I'll pick four finalists. You vote for the best house. It's Gene's Holiday House at cbs46.com, brought to us by Direct TV. Still ahead on CBS 46 News at 11. A car thief leads police on a wild ride, and this one ends on the rocks. And a young man ends up in the drink after skating on thin ice. You're watching CBS 46 News at 11. Limited edition gifts for everyone on your list, from autographed guitars to ornaments with Swarovski crystals. While supplies last, starting November 26th. This is where the birth defect was revealed in an ultrasound. Here's where surgeries were performed to close the palate. And this is where the confidence grew on Grace's first day of school. Thanks to support from people like you, Children's Health Care of Atlanta gives kids like Grace a lot to smile about. To make a donation, call 404-785-GIVE.